Good morning, everyone. It is my true pleasure to bid you all welcome to this Oxford Smith School World Forum 2024. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed researchers, advisory board members, business fellows, founders, students, colleagues, and all you friends of the Oxford Smith School, I'm really pleased to see so many of you and to see a diverse crowd from many specters of life and many specters of uh, the kind of work that we all engage in about climate change and nature. Adopting uh, net zero technologies could save the UK economy billions. Nature-based solutions can support economic recovery in Peru creating resilient ecosystems and communities, scaling up carbon removal efforts offer a clear path to meeting global climate goals. However, efforts like ill-judged tree planting in Africa need to be reconsidered to avoid harming ecosystems. With a better focus, impact investing could promote equality rather than entrenching inequality. Ending impunity for environmental crimes would safeguard both people and nature. While four billion people still lack safe water, sustainable solutions present a transformative opportunity to improve global affordable access to water. These are all research findings from or some of, I would say, some of the research findings from the Oxford Smith School research just this year engaging teams of interdisciplinary researchers across the university and beyond, which have all engaged with practice, providing insights that have served to impact the world in some way changed action in one way or another. And I mention this interdisciplinarity and impact in a university, this does not come easily. And this is very much at the core of the work we do at the Oxford Smith School. Our programs cover a range of themes from finance, law, water, food, carbon removal, cooling, well-being, and as of, of, of this year, we're also focusing on nature-based solutions, as you will have noted from the very theme of this year's World Forum. Many of our researchers have just returned from the New York, like, like many of you, uh, 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 coming to join us here today, from the New York Climate Week and from the UN General Assembly. And I was delighted to hear some of my former colleagues in the United Nations uh, and also some of our advisory board members where we had a meeting yesterday saying how the Oxford Smith School was actually referenced several times during the New York Climate Week, uh, for example, on our Oxford offsetting principles and also on our recent work on the effectiveness of 1,500 climate policies, what works best. So uh, for... Today, we have chosen uh, bridging nature, climate, and finance as our theme for today. To drive action on protecting nature and biodiversity while tackling climate change. And we can go further and we can consider how these solutions can actually become part of our global economic systems. And uh, with some critical international meetings coming up, in particular the coming biodiversity and the climate COP this year and the COP 30 in Brazil next year, we are prepared to engage in these dialogues. So I sincerely welcome all of you. You've been invited here today because you have the power, the energy, the ideas to take action, whether that is in finance, in business, policy, civil society, academia, and uh, where you uh, engage your networks. So today we hope like the two former years where we've had the World Forum, that you will share your knowledge, you will build relationships and support each other uh, in developing solutions that can help for this, us for the sustainable future. And I want to thank especially uh, our sponsors this year, Joe Hambro, Capital Management, and Marex for helping us to make this day come true. Also a big Thank you to QCF, Quadrature Climate Foundation, whose generous support has indeed helped the Smith School facilitate our step change uh, over the past few years. I would also like to thank you, so of, you know, for some of you here, of all the work that you help us with going on behind the scenes. In particular, I would like to thank and invite our two co-chairs, 
Richard Norse and Chris Apollop to just stand up so everybody can see you because you're doing a fabulous work for us. Uh, and uh, <laughs> just stand up so everybody can see you. Yeah, thank you. Really, really appreciate it. <laughs> As you will know, it's just it's not just those meetings, there's very few meetings a year uh, where we meet. Uh, it's also all those meetings and email exchanges and everything else that goes on in between. That, by the way, also goes for the other advisory board members. And please, can I ask you just briefly to stand up? Connie, Connie Hedegaard, Howard Covington, David Schuchman, Uday Kemke, Jeremy Smith, and our founders, Mart Martin and Elise Smith, of course. Please, thank you. Your support is really, really appreciated. So today we have a full morning, we have a full day planned for you, and uh, we have uh, panels with brilliant researchers, outstanding practitioners, and uh, we have some breakout after lunch, we have some breakout sessions as usual, three breakout sessions you can choose between, I will introduce them just before we go out for breakfast. And of course we have the always unforgettable Oxford debate again this year. Uh, it was, uh, it, we, we still talk about you know, the session last year and how they sort of changed the opinion in the room. So there is something about the Oxford debate that actually still works and is very alive. So I'm looking much forward to that this afternoon. Our panels this morning will be about cultivating a prosperous future, driving sustainable food solutions, and also uh, leaders of early, uh, early stage businesses towards nature positive. And then we will also introduce some of the breaking ground research among some of our researchers in the space of nature, climate, and finance on this stage. So I um, am very, very happy to start off this morning um, Having here on my stage our Vice Chancellor Irene Tracy, Professor and also the Vice Chancellor from 1st of January last year. Uh, you were previously the warden of Merton, Merton College and a lot of other fabulous things, but I will say just for the audience here today, I cannot imagine leading the Smith School or being a professor in a university today with that kind of leadership and that kind of support for, from a, a vice chancellor actually setting climate change at the top of her agenda. You cannot imagine what it means when I'm out talking with our colleagues across the wider university to have that kind of support. So thank you very much, Irene. Well, thank you, Meta, so much, and a very, very good morning to you all on this slightly damp and wet October morning. Uh, let me add my warm words of welcome to you all here, to those of you who are new to the University of Oxford, to this wonderful College of St Hilda's, and uh, for just taking the time out to have this fantastic gathering on this very important topic of bridging nature, climate and finance. As Meta said, it's absolutely fantastic and imperative, in fact, to have leaders from all the different sections that you represent, from business, policy, civil society and academia, to build the relationships, to share your knowledge, and I really do hope to develop some solutions that will help accelerate the transition to a sustainable future. We are getting to the point of slight desperation, rather, don't want to sound too dramatic, but uh, let's be honest, uh, the need is there and it's becoming ever more present. And as I often say, and has been said before, in situations of revolution and rebellion, if not now, when? And if not us, who? So, with the various macroeconomic geopolitical challenges alongside the significant political changes that we're all going to be witnessing around the world, it is hard, I'm sure for you who are in this space, I'm a neuroscientist, so I'm just on the periphery of it, but I'm married to a climate scientist, so I do get this at home all the time. Um, and so I'm very aware that with all the swirl that's going on in the world and, and the desperate, bleak situations that many peoples are facing, it's hard, I think, for you in this space to keep this pressing issue uh, you know, in the line of sight of our politicians and at the forefront of society's collective consciousness. So, in my opinion, it's even more important that places like Oxford and other higher education institutions stand strong and be those collective voices speaking truth to power on behalf of those with no voices, but who are living with the devastating consequences of climate change, as well as to start to step up, to contribute at scale towards the solutions that are so desperately needed. It's not easy, and we know that, but then again, 
we don't do easy in this university. A major, major world-leading research-intensive university like Oxford has always taken on the seemingly impossible and difficult, like developing the COVID-19 vaccine and now the malaria vaccines that are literally have and are saving millions of lives. We didn't know when we embarked on that journey, would we pull it off? But that's what we do. So difficult is what we do, and therefore the climate problem is one that we must take on. Drawing on that extraordinary depth and breadth in the climate area that we're very fortunate to have and spans all of our great divisions of this university, from the humanities to the physical sciences to the social sciences and the medical sciences. We're uniquely placed, if one thinks about it, to work in a collaborative way with partners across the world to take on this major interdisciplinary problem, which requires that interdisciplinary breadth. And as I often remind my academic colleagues, remember we're not subject to political electoral cycles. We don't have to do annual shareholder returns. And we naturally have always, in our 800 year history, worked across geographical boundaries. So we are again, well placed and free to take on such challenges that are more difficult, I think, for different political systems and uh, geographically placed countries. And so that's why, as Meta said, I'm set last year uh, in 2023, in my first year of my tenure, that climate would be the university's grand challenge. And we've been forging the necessary steps to be more targeted in a solutions-based approach and to be collaborative with other institutions, private public partners in areas where we feel we lack only a few, the expertise. And the Smith School, of course, has been intimately involved and at the centre point in those convening sessions across the university. And I have been so grateful to Meta for her leadership and to the Smith School for the support and the willingness to help take our collective ambition forward across the collegiate university. But it doesn't end there. We must also equip our undergraduate students with knowledge too, as no matter what career they pursue, they will have to address climate change in some way or other. So last year, I challenged us to create a new learning experience in our 800-year history for our undergraduates. Now, for those who are not from the UK, I'd just like to remind you that at an undergraduate level, we're very heavily a British university. We're 80% British university uh, undergraduate students. We're about 70% international at a graduate level. Why am I telling you that? Well, those large undergraduate 80% body are drawn from the British education system that has the great divide at age 15, 16. Will I be humanities? Will I be social sciences? Or will I be STEM? And then that's it for the rest. They then come here and then they focus very much on an individual subject. So this specialization, whilst fantastic and gives you deep learning, does present challenges later on if one needs to have interdisciplinary skills or learn interdisciplinary language if we're going to take on some of the great global challenges of our time. As Meta has said, these are interdisciplinary problems. So we launched the Vice Chancellor's Colloquium on Climate Change, uh, and it brought students from all disciplines to learn together something about climate, from senior professors, including Meta, debating and discussing in a two-hour lecture format. The students also learned what good debate looks like, what courteous discourse and disagreement looks like, and then they had postgraduate mentors providing tutorials in various supporting colleges. Historians learned about maths and statistics. Physicists learned about policy. And linguists learned about infection and so on. And what was fantastic is not just the huge enthusiasm from the student base. Within two days, we had 400 signed up for 200 places. The faculty loved it too, because they were teaching in a completely new format that they've ever taught in before and enjoyed the heterogeneity of the viewpoints of that student body. And we pulled it off. We did it at pace, and, uh, and it's been just this huge success. And they all did little research projects and internships over the summer. This year, we're aiming to double the numbers. But my ambition, which is completely shared uh, by Meta, who has, of course, been such a champion for the importance of educating the young about climate, our ambition collectively, isn't it, Meta, is that we will provide all students at Oxford with some education on climate change whilst they are with us and how they will need to consider their role in tackling it going forward in whatever career they do. And I know I can rely on the Smith School to support us on delivering on that ambition. Now, just a few statistics for those who, again, don't know too much about the Smith School. And shame on you if you don't. <clears throat> but the Smith School was established 15 years ago, and it has pioneered education and research on climate change and sustainability, becoming the natural convener on these topics across the university, as well as beyond, supporting, again, that cross-disciplinary research on climate change. 
It is going to be and is essential for Oxford realising the climate ambition that we have set. And it's fantastic to see the Smith School now strengthening its relationships with other huge schools in our ecosystem, like the Said Business School and the Bratnitz School of Government, leading engagement with business and policy to drive real action and ensure that the output has direct and practical use. Now, you might not be aware, so I'm going to tell you, but the MSc here in Sustainability, Enterprise and Environment receives the highest number of applications per space at Oxford across all subjects. And though there have only been three cohorts, the alumni have already gone on to have great impact with graduates featured in Forbes 30 and a 30 list in 2023 and 2024 for their work in sustainable energy and technology. What extraordinary impact, again, at pace. Congratulations to you all. The Global Youth Climate Training Programme. This won my Vice-Chancellor's Award for Environmental Sustainability just this year in May, and it's just completed its second year, already educating thousands of champions under the age of 35. And the Smith School, of course, is host to outstanding research, organised into various programmes, as Meta has detailed. And earlier this year, I was delighted to recognise Rob Hope and the team with, again, one of the Vice-Chancellor's Awards, for their work in the REACH and the water security uh, project that they have been running across Ethiopia, Kenya and Bangladesh over the past eight years. Now you're going to hear more about the school's other leading researchers later on and throughout the programme, with executive education at the Smith School helping businesses and policymakers to understand and deploy evidence-based solutions. This year saw the first course looking at climate-related legal risks well-established courses in sustainable finance and net zero aligned offsetting, linking again to the world leading Oxford offsetting principles. So this gathering that you're here today, this feast of intellectual uh, fun that you will enjoy um, is all about action. And I encourage you to embrace the opportunity that the forum provides to forge new relationships. My experience, 35 years being uh, a medical scientist, is that relationships are what get things done. It's all about relationships. That's how we actually get stuff done and act. So please forge new relationships. Please renew old ones. Be bold, ask the tough questions, challenge the status quo, and let's work collaboratively to make a difference. You have my fullest support, Meta, and I look forward to hearing uh, about the outcomes uh, later on, as sadly I'll have to disappear in about half an hour. But thank you and have a wonderful day. Thank you so very, very much, uh, Vice-Chancellor Irene Tracy, for these words, and particularly for also uh, focusing on the education, which is not on the sort of the, uh, the agenda for this particular day, but it's underlying everything we do, and of course, one of the great impact that we have uh, as a university and uh, as, the, as the Smith School will support. So very happy to support you uh, on your journey in the future. Thank you very much.